Good afternoon, Abbotsford residents. Today, I'm in beautiful Abbotsford, BC. I wanna show you something. Mike DeYoung has posted on his Facebook, him and Pierre Pauliad, sending a message that he's won the candidate and Pierre's selecting him after all the stuff this Liberal did in Abbotsford, especially telling Abbotsford residents, cut a deal, Henry owns Abbotsford. Mike DeYoung. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to elaborate today about a police force. Men and women that are the scums of the earth, trash, garbage, thought they had a perfect plan. Today, I want to make something very clear to you in this podcast. I want you to hear very clear, clear of what took place in Abbotsford on Abbotsford residence. Without the help, of the mission RCMP men and women when Abbotsford residents and myself went to them. Adolf Hitler would have rose in power and built his police force, Henry Braun. Henry Brown had the control of the whole of Abbotsford police force. He elected himself to get in as mayor. He had his son in front of him. He had the majority of council. When I went over to the RCMP mission, and told with Abbotsford homeowners what his son was doing. The RCMP knew right now that is persuading jobs and decisions your way. When the RCMP heard what Dave Lowens and city councils called Abbotsford first where Ross Siemens were in Henry's house over the majority of councils, the RCMP knew that was in collaborating, racketeering and bringing jobs your way and Henry knew the official community plan. He could lobby for Rob Funk and the verse and set everything up. But the RCMP mission also knew the MLA and the MP now have to call it out. And when they weren't, the words of Darren Braun said, quote, you go to them, them homeowners go to the Ed Faster, Mike Dion. They're both under my dad's thumb. Henry said, if you fucking go to Ed Fast, it goes nowhere, applying that he owned them. Today, I want to elaborate on something special. When Abbotsford homeowners had their houses damaged by Henry's scam bringing jobs to his place next to his land so it could be lived, Henry was using the city chair to bring stuff to his land and his friends for gain. Not for Abbotsford, but for gain. The internal fighting was so bad in Abbotsford of watching Henry, checking Henry. Henry was damaging everybody and trying to destroy everybody, but he took a majority of Abbotsford political politicians with him. But he took control of the Abbotsford police, the whole police force. When Henry Brown single-handedly picked up the phone and told the Abbotsford police task force, them are the men that go out and their faces are sealed and you can't see them, to go ring Mogel so Mogel can't beat him in the election. The Abbotsford police took their black GM or their black trucks, their Ford trucks, and went out and ring Mogel's campaign, figuring nobody would catch him. It was Darren Braun that leaked what Henry was doing with the Abbotsford upper top of the police department. Now let me explain something. The Abbotsford police have a safety standards act, they have a deputy police chief and they have chiefs to chiefs, to advisors to advisors, to staff sergeants to investigators. Henry controlled them all, the whole upper police department. When I learned that Henry was using Mike Sir and the criminal acts that took place, but I want to go back and tell you what took place. When the Abbotsford police could check out on their things, anytime they wanted to take the Dodge Chargers, I'm taking them out in the middle of the winter, and went joyriding, no chains, no tires. When the Abbotsford police climbed on your top of your vehicles in the name of charity and jumping around and then submitting their bills on your time cards. When the Abbotsford police went in and beat it up a person with her little kids at the height of the coronavirus because they were gathered but allowed Mike DeYoung to have an illegal party on Bell Road with all his crony friends and wouldn't raid it because it was going to bring political chaos. There was a group of people called the Abbotsford News, Henry was manipulating them to write their stories, Vicky Hopes and Ken's, to keep pulling up the establishment that Henry put together. You can see the Versus site is illegal. You can see the Verse Ram Funk a Sage building the new site down by the hospital, it's illegal. Henry lobbied all these jobs. You could see the Verse 
coming soon on the Kakero Ranch. He lobbied all these jobs. He had Ross and councils with him. When Henry found out his son told, Henry had to up the violence. Abbotsford did not know what was behind the scenes. Great men that I stood by side. I know the former John Van Doggen. I know Randy Hoffs. I know the Harrison Mayor. I know many people, Bill Vandersam. I know many people that I'm tied to in this community and other communities with dignitaries. And when I went to these dignitaries and these people and said, Henry Brown and his establishment are using the community police department for threats and manipulation, the top of the police department are using their name and their shields to say, show the community that, look at us, you need us, you got to trust us, and they're in organized crime. Land lifts threatening residents. It is clear what the city hall is for. When there's an act that took place as bad as what Henry did to Councillor Mogel, it goes in front of the city auditorium and councils get to hear it. Henry was blackjacking the city auditorium so nobody could speak. He took open mic away, he took everything away. And unless you went upstairs and sat in front of Henry and you were bullied, this wasn't gonna make the auditorium. The auditorium is where people can live stream and watch it and say, what the hell were the Abbotsford police doing, the task force? This didn't open the speculation and didn't come to, like Darren Brown said, it looked like a conspiracy. You knew the Abbotsford police, high investigators are now involved in organized crime. How many drugs have they seized and went and shared it between them up at the top? Whatever God act have they done for Henry and what else have they done? How many other people have they framed and threatened it was out of control? When I ran for mayor, I ran to be a voice on the neglect that Henry was threatening Abbotsford residents. His son was in front of him. Council were in his house, Darren Brown showed, not calling stuff out. The city engineers and bylaws were being handcuffed so Henry could have his friends like Manny Farms and the Pog and everything else go. But political, two political politicians were playing games with Abbotsford's lives. That's as simple as that. A private police department they were building to control at the top. When you have this, and you have this much, and them many witnesses, you know investigators gotta come in, they can't be held out. Mike Sir knew the walls were caving, so he packed his shit, the chief, and he fled to Surrey. Henry controlled the Abbots for police. I made it clear to the RCMP. The RCMP said, Mr. Pelican, run in the election. And we're going to see if Henry orders the task force on top of you. During the election, the Abbots for police were ordered by Henry Brown. So let me make this clear to the investigators, to the staff sergeant, to the safety standard staff that thought there, my badge and my position is going to protect you. Around my job site, the Abbotsford police increased their abuse, increased their attacks to make me pull out of the election or make me leave Abbotsford. The Abbotsford police then also did this. Everywhere I went uptown to campaign, they came after me with speeding tickets, reckless driving, endangerment driving, all these little things. So you would say I had enough and leave town. They're called petty little acts chiseling their way at people. The great assholes that were in here, staff sergeant and investigators, knew when I took to social media, that there needs an investigation. They didn't. They went upstairs under that fucking company's name and they hid their abuse. Hidden their abuse constantly because two politicians were owning them and it was about money. It was never about the safety of the community. There was great many witnesses, the RCMP, Thanks to the RCMP, the RCMP said this, Mr. Pelican, we know you're on the world stage because you had no more choice. They were blocking everything, so you took to the world stage to speak loud and clear on the Abbots for Police, investigators and everything that were involved in organized crime. But we want to protect all the witnesses, so we don't want you to give them up. We don't want anybody to stand beside you that was eyewitnesses to what the Abbotsford police did. When the Abbotsford police investigators come, they're being sent by Henry and the establishment. Do not give them people up or say who they were. Many people witnessed it. Many people witnessed the abuse day in and day out. It was the company's name and what Ken and Vicky Hopes could pull up for the company and clean it. Henry went in. 
and he was brutalizing Abbotsford. When I ran in that election, nobody's allowed to block. Even Pierre Pauly had said it. Henry knew he had to load Ross Siemens. When Greg Toes was sent to buy me and said, I'll compensate you for all your signs to Chamber of Commerce, holding me out of the debate and everything else, he was sent by Henry. That message was already to the RCMP. They said, don't take no bribes. Don't take no bribes from nobody. Mr. Pelican made it clear. When a judge said, nobody can use the law, nobody can bend the law, he also said this, and nobody's above the law. He said, nobody thinks of the end, they only think of the beginning. These men well, were investigators, staff sergeant, sergeant to sergeant, fat whaling, useless safety standards act. Believe their shield, the company's name, and their position. And what they could do, they were going to get away with it. It wasn't the community police, ladies and gentlemen. It didn't take the RCMP to do what it needed to be done for Abbotsford residents, for Abbotsford citizens, and to put protection around me and help Abbotsford. We are so grateful for what the mission men and women did as human beings. You could see what took place. I took to the world stage because Henry was owning the private police department to utter threats in the business world here in Abbotsford for gains of money. But I also took to the stage because it had three leading politicians at Abbotsford. Henry Brown, Ed Fast, who was his best friend, his wife said, Michael D. John, the MLA for the BC Liberals, which is BC United, that's trying to run now and get the seat and believes if I could get a slammed into Pierre Polyad's party, I will be protected from prosecution and everything he's done, and Pamela Alexis. When the RCMP were behind us, they knew that these people should have been standing on the stage and calling press conference. It wasn't. It was all trying to save the company. When the Abbotsford police knew they were in turmoil and they were in trouble, Witnesses on witnesses to witnesses to witnesses beside witnesses and witnesses that you couldn't manage. The Abbotsford Police Task Force was ordered by Henry having that phone call. Came up to my house and went, you fucking lost the election, you little prick. You lost the election. When the Abbotsford Police saw me uptown, they jumped out and smashed my phone, smashed my cameras, made accusations that I was in town when I was working in Right Rock. Today I was told that fat, useless, fucking whale, piece of shit cop is still on duty and nobody's disciplined him and nobody's hauled him under. That the chief went crawling, crawling over to Henry's brother Irwin. When the police board was up, the APD Foundation, the APF Foundation was up for re-election to a board. Doctors, I was told, temple leaders, lawyers and many dignitaries wanted to put their name forward to run on that board. It was hand-picked for Irwin Brown to sit there to control establishment with Sandy Blue. Here's a woman that went in at the sports center with witnesses on witnesses, two witnesses, above witnesses, and around witnesses, and witnesses you couldn't believe. Said that I grouped her up the dress and did all this. She fled from there with Abbotsford first. They were trying to load Ross Siemens. Abbotsford police targeted my life endangered my life in Abbotsford residence for scams with their head of their mob, Henry Brown. High-ranking officers believed their uniform and their position would hold it down and clean it. And what they could abuse on Abbotsford residence and myself would help the company in their positions. It's clear. I don't have to paint that picture, how clear it is. When an act of crime has took place, what an investigator must do. Instead, they went in there and stuck their finger up their asshole. It was Darren Brown when he was leaking the information. Did not know I was Mr. Pelican or a homeowner thanks to the RCMP. Said my fucking dad's scamming the 70 fucking one million and council are going with him and they could wreck no fit. They were stealing to build a police department that nobody could hold accountable. When it was removed from in front of the city auditorium, it was being removed purposely so Henry could control it. All you have to do is go into the city archives and you can look at all the jobs that were lobbied Henry's way, Henry's partner's way, and you can look at the decisions that were made. You don't need to be in law enforcement or a criminal investigation to know that Rob Funk of the Verse bought an illegal site. He had all councillors' house signs and Ross Siemens on him. That was to help him with the job, Sage. 
You don't need to know that you can't go in and change the zoning from 200 to 455. You know right now Peter Sparanese, city lawyer and city managers are on the take. Nobody was calling that out because Ed and Mike were involved. Henry was using and manipulating the people in Abbotsford. Vicki Hopes wrote little pornical little stories with Ken. You know that Sarah Cooper signs illegal on man farms. You know Pam pointed the lady of tourism over there to there. You know the Mackenzie Bog. You know the acts. You know when Pam had the debate the other night with the conservatives and said Canadians were useless, they don't work, that's why we let refugees in. You knew that Henry was controlling of who I need in and establishment. When Dave Sadu used his dad, Andy Sadu, at the auditorium of UFB to block me to load Ross Siemens. But you also know this. Today, the Abbotsford police have no politicians around them and everybody's been at our houses. The Abbotsford investigators have nobody bailing them out. It's a sympathy move to keep a company that was in high, high criminal organized gang. You even have to think like I think they got their own guy killed. They were doing shit and somebody probably did, had enough of it and went the opposite way and didn't call a press conference. They were involved up to their necks. These are young children, small families, and everybody. But a democracy allows anybody. Henry needed these voices silence. He needed that done. And he paid them high-ranking, losing pieces of shit that sat there, I'm an investigator. Now they're worried, because the end is here. They don't want to be dragged. They don't want to be fired. They don't want to be their faces up. It's a foregone conclusion. When I made it clear to the RCMP, I said a judge of Abbotsford pulled us back up with his words and his words of wisdom. Nobody thinks of the end, they only think of the beginning. To the Abbotsford police investigators, the wisdom and the knowledge of the RCMP, the men and women that care about this community and residents and only care about the body of law, saw right through your scam, your garbage, and whose ass you were leaking. And that was clear right out the front. Darren Brown in front of his dad, counseling his dad's house and what was taking place. But to bust the criminal code for selfish gains in a paycheck, target people, you have to be called out. When your faces go on podcasts that, hey, Joe Rogan goes, look at this guy. He's an Abbotsford police investigator. He investigates crime and he sat there and done nothing while this took place. It went too far. It has gone too far. It was named of greed. It wasn't even about law enforcement. It was greed. We can get the new building up. We can get that done. When Diverse was hauling its illegal soil over in Chilliwack, Ken Pop-Up put a stop to it. When Ross knocked his contaminated gas station down and tugged it in mission all over, it should have been in Vicky Hope's newspaper, it wasn't. They were friends of friends. How I got that information, how that information came, Henry screwed up. He took his son in the city in front of him, and Darren Brown knew his dad's business, who his dad was tied, and how his dad was his. But I want you to think of this when you close your eyes. A man in Abbotsford, Henry Brown, picked the phone up and called the Abbotsford Task Force, having all their numbers to do his dirty, filthy business and sent them to my house. Abbotsford investigators went in shutdown mode because they know the only thing they need to do now is keep it off of them so the RCMP don't come in and you can see them fighting it. When gangs and people in criminal activity find out that Abbotsford police do not function as a police, a man called Henry Brown and Ed Fast and Mike Young run the whole company. They're going to go to him and say, listen, I want this criminal charges dropped against me. You're the man calling the shots in Abbotsford. And that was true. That task force should have never, ever came to my house. And what should have been done? It's an investigation and the, and the police complaints commission brought in right away. It wasn't. Because political politicians were using Abbotsford as a dumping ground for laundering and scamming money, lobbying out of the province, bringing it here on jobs and kicks and leaves. Henry Brown crossed the body of law. Henry Brown, when he got in his Alexis car, came at me in a protest, hit and rend me, put me in the hospital, gouged me all up and fled from the scene of the accident in his Alexis car. The Abbotsford Staff Sergeant, Gertie Purdy, who caused that accident, said, go fuck yourself. I ain't gonna charge Henry Brown. My 18-year-old son ran my sight. I wanna make it clear. When I said to the RCMP, these are the injuries from the hospital and everything else. 
This is what investigators are supposed to go to the hospital and pick up there. I want to make it clear. These men and women were in organized crime. The question to Abbotsford residents, which I already know, how much have they done? How much illegal, filthy acts have these investigators and staff sergeants done to these residents? How much? It wasn't about law enforcement. It was about filthy men. So I want to explain something. When I showed you on their time card on Canada Day, ripping your taxpayers off for all day, I want to tell you this too. They go into no thrills, and they go into Costco, and they go shopping with the, our police vehicles to buy groceries for their families, using our company vehicles to buy groceries. But they also do this. They take the pickup trucks to the lumber yard to go buy materials to take home for their renovations, all in our name of our vehicles. Nobody was checking them, because Henry took the city auditorium away that you could go in and hold that. And the city councils and everybody were already in too far. When Darren Brown said, it looks like a conspiracy, nobody will ever be able to prove it. I walked over to the best men and women that ever served this country, and I'm proud to say that they were there for Abbotsford and always have been, the RCMP mission. Tremendous man, even when Henry Brown said to my neighbor, that she was a dumb brown Hindu cow. They said, Mr. Pelican, don't stand there and call that out. Henry was trying to blackjack and lift everything. It's a foregone conclusion if you look at all the jobs he sat on and what he did. When he attacked Mo Gill, he should have sued Mo Gill for slandering him. He didn't, because Mo would have said, get the police in, the RCMP in, and open the cases. So what are we going to see? We're going to see the begging of Pam through Mike Sears. We need Bob Rich, the former chief in here, to investigate. All of them to hold the RCMP off, it's clear. Look at all Henry's land deals and what he lobbied his way to set up when he got out. When Henry took that initiative with Ross Siemens to block that election and load Ross Siemens, it wasn't for Abbotsford, it was for Henry, Rob Funk, the verse, and what Henry could get and the kickbacks on jobs. All it took was one mistake. Henry Brown's son pulled it all together and put it all together to the top of Abbotsford Police Department. Law enforcement around the world, people in our community, people from communities know all the dignitaries that were here in Abbotsford, and I made it clear to John Rested and the BC Conservatives. All the people who are here and are running in the federal elections at our houses see the threats and everything. No, that this company was in organized crime. You can't get out of it. No police badge, no mime, I'm an, I'm an investigator too, is going to save this. You're an organized crime on families, land lifts and everything. You know damn well that you can't lobby a job. You know damn well you can't change your zoning. You know damn well you can't take illegal soil and dump it. You know damn well you can't get in your car and try to kill somebody. You know damn well you can't block election. You know damn well. And that was a dead giveaway, but the Abbotsford police top investigators were involved. How much is coming my way? How much is coming my way? All their overtime hours, their double times. There was a man in there that knew law enforcement. They were all bags of shit using Vicky Hopes to prop them up for this fucking company that they were stealing from. They beat the homeless, they beat residents, they did everything. All they now know is the end's got to come, like the judge said. And they're trying to hold it off. Every one of them stupid, filthy men were involved in it, what they did. I made it clear to the RCMP, I made it clear to all the politicians. We go all the way all the way. A man set up a police force to own it, control it, manipulate it, own the task force and everybody. You can't keep them. I know that and you know that. They're sitting upstairs trying to do damage control. They knew day one when Henry hit and ran there was too many witnesses to even try to block it. They were going to do it for their head of the leader on downs, Henry Brown. But I want to emphasize, it had Michael D. Jong, the MLA, of Kevin Falcons, which is the BC United, that's trying to run for protection under the Federals. And Ed Fast cleaning this on these little families, on this stuff that took place. This is what they use the Abbotsford Police Force. We'll go get them to go beat them up. We'll justify it because we're in uniforms. We'll never get caught. Might have been they could have got away from it if Darren Brown wouldn't have showed me what they were doing to Mogel. And I went over to the RCMP and said, if I put my name forward, Henry's going to make them calls to get them to do that. He wants to own this city so bad, and they're going to do it. Thanks to the RCMP, ladies and gentlemen, them videos and them witnesses and them guys that did it are all caught. You can't outrun it, and they have to be charged and prosecuted. 
This shit that Henry did it, this shit that Ed did it, they're investigators sitting up there with their hands up their asshole, don't know which way to go in this community. The question is, how much filthy things have they done on Abbotsford's young youth or to women and used their position to hold each other clean? How much? The smashing of my phone, the smashing that my son bought me for Father's Day, the lying, the acquisition, when Olenoff said he went to Henry's because there was no break-ins and their own staff sergeant said he's a liar. He's going there and he's taking abuse orders for Henry to run gang and beat people up. To the police chief. I crawl on your bloody hands to that crime toast breakfast, to Irwin Brown, to Ron Funk that donated for protection to your police force, and I start licking ass a lot more because what had took place in this residence, nobody can look away. And that there, I made this podcast true because I want to make sure to all law enforcement, I am so grateful with Abbotsford residents to the RCMP emission. We cannot stop thanking them enough for our safety, for what's right, for our democracy, what took place, and everything, but to expose organized crime that was thought it could get away with it. I'm live, Abbotsford, Breeze Seat.